možemo da počnemo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation of the May Inflation Report. As always, we will give you an overview of recent monetary and macroeconomic trends and our expectations for the period ahead. And the main news will be presented at the very start. We have revised our GDP growth projection for this year from 1.8% upwards. And based on our current expectations, in 2016, the Serbian economy will grow by 2.3% or 2.5%. So GDP growth will range from 23 to 2.5%. Given current developments, it is far more certain that the final um, GDP growth rate will be in the upper region of the projection which means at the level of 2.5%. And it's not that we're being optimistic. Um, these projections are based on uh, mathematics, on the accurate uh, models, and on the macroeconomic data. Relative to the February report, uh, mac macroeconomic prospects have improved even further. For this reason, the positive macroeconomic prospects uh, for the coming period have been revised up relative to the previous report. Fiscal deficit in the first three months contracted by a quarter from the same period last year and equaled 1.7% of estimated GDP as compared to 2.4% in the same period a year earlier. The current account deficit of the balance of payments has more than halved compared to the corresponding period in 2015, and it equals 3.3% of estimated GDP and remains fully covered by foreign direct investments. Equally important is the fact that the sustainable rise in tax revenue has improved our fiscal outlook and that the decline in the current account deficit has been driven by more favorable trends in external trade. Last time we met, we expressed no doubts as to the continuation of growth in exports and economic activity in the coming years. Indeed, the growth has continued up and has done so at an even faster pace than expected. Export growth, measured in euro terms, was exceptionally strong. It came at 13.4% year-on-year in the first quarter and is without any doubt attributable to both high growth and favorable structure of foreign direct investment in the period behind. Consumption is recovering faster than anticipated. Owing to the favorable results achieved in the first quarter, we have revised our growth projection for this year from 1.8% to 2.3% or 2.5%. And we now expect that 2016 will end with the GDP growth uh, between 2.3 and 2.5 percent. What I want to additionally uh, highlight is that given the current developments, it is far more certain that the final GDP growth rate will be at the upper bound of the projection. And so far, we expect that the growth will be increasingly driven by investment into export-oriented sectors, as this would guarantee its sustainability. The National Bank of Serbia continues to safeguard macroeconomic stability and strengthen macroeconomic fundamentals. We are all witnessing the upheavals originating in the international environment, different risks spreading from across markets and continents. In such circumstances, 
We have succeeded in maintaining the stability of prices, relative stability of the exchange rate, and financial system stability. Having in mind that uh, the statutory objectives of the National Bank of Serbia include support to the economic policy of the government of the Republic of Serbia, it is exceptionally important for us that uh, expansionary monetary policy and the achieved macroeconomic stability have led also to lower costs of uh, financing for the government and the private sectors whereby considerable support has been given to the creation of a better business and investment environment. Bearing in mind that the effects of uh, monetary policy relaxation and the key policy rate cuts and the cuts in the uh, reserve requirement ratios uh, have a, a time lag, additional positive effects on the real sector are expected in the coming period too. Inflation in Serbia has remained relatively low and equaled 0.4% year-in-year in April. As expected, disinflationary pressures prevailed on account of domestic factors, though they were unexpectedly strong from price movements in the international environment. The lower inflation projection of our main foreign trade partners, notably of the euro area and the continuing decline in the prices of primary agricultural commodities in the global market at the turn of the year have led us to lower our February inflation projection for this year. According to our most recent projection, year-on-year -year inflation should start rising gradually as of May and return within the target tolerance band early next year stabilizing thereafter at slightly above 3%. In an environment of low inflationary pressures and aiming to bring inflation back within the target tolerance band in a sustainable manner, which is over the medium term, and not in the short run or at any cost, we have continuously eased our monetary policy stance over the past three years. Monetary policy easing was particularly intensive last year when the key policy rate was cut by 350 basis points, which among others was facilitated by consistent implementation of fiscal consolidation and structural reforms. Even though inflationary pressures are low and macroeconomic fundamentals continue to improve, we have decided to keep the key policy rate unchanged at 4.25% for the time being because of persistent uncertainties in the international commodity and financial markets. On the other hand, movements in the domestic market, most notably the continuing and significant narrowing of both internal and external imbalances are cushioning the effects of external risks. What is certain in this time of uncertainty seeping in from the international environment is that we shall rise, we as the National Bank of Serbia shall rise through all the challenges and attain higher and sustainable economic growth rates led by export-oriented investment. The improved macroeconomic indicators and a brighter outlook for the period ahead have also been recognized and acknowledged by the European Commission, which revised up the economic growth projection for Serbia for both this and the next year, and by rating agencies which raised Serbia's credit rating outlook. This is what I wanted to tell you in this introductory part, and I now give the floor to Anna Ivković, who will present to you in more detail our view of Serbia's macroeconomic prospects in the period ahead. Together with our associates Mirjana Miletic, Mirko Djukic, Branko Hinic, Milan Trajković, and Vice Governor Veselin uh, Pješć. So, we stand ready to answer any of your queries after Anna's presentation. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.
Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the press and fellow economists, welcome to the presentation of the May Inflation Report, during which we will present current economic developments in Serbia and explain new macroeconomic projections as well as monetary policy measures of our bank. Since our last meeting in February, inflation has stayed low. Economic recovery has accelerated and our expectations for the period ahead have improved. According to the latest projection, year-on-year -year inflation will rise from May onward and make its way back within the target tolerance band early next year, stabilizing thereafter at slightly above 3%. Our GDP uh, projection, as the governor said, uh, has been revised for 2016 from 1.8 percent in February to 2.3 to 2.5 percent. But I have to reiterate what the governor said. It is more certain that uh, uh, the growth will be closer to the upper bound of the projection. It is particularly important that both internal and external imbalances have narrowed further, increasing Serbia's resilience to challenges from the international environment to which all countries are exposed. Our expectations that both fiscal and current account deficits will be lower in 2016 than in 2015 are confirmed by even more favorable fiscal and balance of payments movements since the start of the year. At 1.7 percent of GDP, the consolidated fiscal deficit it was almost a quarter lower than in the same period a year before, which is also well below the ceiling under the agreement with the IMF, which is 5.8 percent of GDP. Namely, uh, the fiscal deficit is much lower uh, than the fiscal deficit from the same period of 2015, and it is also below the ceiling uh, under the agreement with the IMF. Furthermore, the current account deficit has been more than halved relative to the same period of 2015 and stands at 3.3 percent of GDP. With FDI coverage of the current account deficit as at 133% this year and 113% last year, the deficit remains fully covered by FDI. For quite some time, developments in the international environment have posed a challenge to monetary policies of central banks worldwide, and in particular to small and open economies such as ours. They are therefore a good starting point for a more detailed analysis of macroeconomic movements and prospects. Rising uncertainty late last and early this year was triggered by weaker, weaker global growth prospects a continued slide in global prices of primary commodities and the start of normalization of the Fed's monetary policy. In response, the leading central banks have taken fresh measures and announced more monetary accommodation than previously expected. In March, the ECB adopted a set of measures to ease, to ease its monetary policy further. The Fed, on the other hand, announced the slower dynamics of policy rate hikes, somewhat appeasing financial and commodity markets. Further, China's monetary policy measures mitigated the risk of a sudden slowdown in Chinese and, consequently, in global growth. Diminished concerns over sudden slowdown of global growth and expectations of lower oil supply gave impulse to the recovery of global prices of oil and other primary commodities. And this is something you can see in these charts. Though global oil prices increased from uh, 26 um, US dollars per barrel in January to the present level of 48 dollars per barrel, they're still roughly 60 percent lower than in June 2014. Global prices of other primary commodities increased as well, most notably of metal and agricultural commodities. Substantial volatility in these markets is expected in the period ahead as well.
Depreciation pressures on the dinar have been present since late last year when uncertainty in the international financial market increased. Relatively high demand for foreign exchange in the domestic market was caused by seasonally higher payments for energy imports, but also by servicing of foreign liabilities. On the other hand, a much improved export performance and FDI inflow helped moderate pressures on the dinar. We expect these pressures to be further alleviated by current developments in the international financial market that also reflected on Serbia's risk premium, which measured by the emerging markets bond index, fell by 64 basis points to 267 basis points over the past three months. Stability in the foreign exchange market is also sustained by the continued narrowing of external and internal imbalances. Foreign trade imbalances narrowed further this year, mostly on account of investment in tradable sectors, lower global oil prices and recovery in external demand. As exports of goods and services grew at a much faster pace, the first quarter current account deficit was more than halved relative to the same period a year before. Fiscal prospects improved further in early 2016 as well, guided mainly by higher VAT and excise revenue. The consolidated budget deficit was 16 billion dinars in the first quarter, or almost a quarter less than in, than in the same period a year earlier. According to Moody's, which raised Serbia's credit rating outlook in March, further narrowing of internal and external imbalances could support a credit rating upgrade in the period ahead. This should make Serbia more attractive for foreign investment. As before, the National Bank of Serbia will keep a close eye on developments in the foreign exchange market and intervene with the, without bias in either direction, buying and selling foreign exchange, in order to ease excessive short-term oscillations of the exchange rate. In addition, the expected na further narrowing of the current account deficit in 2016, which will be more than covered by FDI, ought to contribute to greater stability of the FX market. In addition to a strong reduction of the fiscal and current account deficit, the start of the year has also been marked by accelerated exports and economic activity. This was due to euro area recovery and favorable terms of trade, but also to high investment in tradable sectors. Quarter on quarter, our GDP gained 1.7% in seasonally adjusted terms, while according to the preliminary estimate of the Serbian Statistical Office, year on year GDP growth was 3.5%. Production and exports increased further in more than three quarters of the manufacturing branches. Together with continued growth in construction, this co contributed most to the acceleration of GDP growth. As actual developments have been more favorable than our expectations stated in the February projection, we have revised our GDP growth projection for 2016 from 1.8% three months ago to 2.3 to 2.5 percent. However, once again, I want to stress that it is more certain that GDP growth will be at the lower bound of the projection, that is 2.5 percent. We expect that growth will be led by investment, thanks to continued implementation of infrastructure projects, improved investment environment, lower operating expenses on account of interest rates and loans and lower energy prices, as well as by exports. The contribution of net exports is expected to be positive instead of neutral as was projected in February. Mm. This is without doubt shown by foreign trade developments which are more favorable than expected. 
real, as the governor said, real export growth accelerated to 13% year-on-year in the first quarter, while imports slowed to 4%. This can be attributed to past foreign direct investment, which involved a large number of smaller projects in various manufacturing branches, which are now recording growth in both production and exports. Inflationary pressures remained low under the impact of the majority of domestic factors, relatively low global prices of primary commodities, and generally low inflation abroad. Consistent with the expectations stated in the February report, year-on-year -year inflation continued to run below the lower bound of the target tolerance band. Though rising to 2.4% though rising to in January, mostly on account of the low prior year base, inflation decreased from February onwards to 0.4% in April. According to our estimate, this will be its lowest level this year. Inflation's movement below the lower bound of the target tolerance band was led primarily by low global prices of oil and primary agricultural commodities, as indicated by the falling prices of petroleum products over the past year and stagnating prices of industrial food products. In addition, Year-on-year -year inflation was dragged down early in the year by fruit and vegetable prices. Furthermore, disinflationary pressures in that period were generated also by euro-area inflation and aggregate demand, as reflected in the relatively low core inflation of 1.7% year-on-year. Short and medium-term inflation expectations of market participants headed further down, mostly owing to low inflation for almost three years. One year ahead, inflation expectations of the financial sector are between 2.5% and 2.8%, while corporates expect somewhat lower inflation of 2%. Though inflation expectations of households are as a rule somewhat higher, they stabilized at 5% from October last year and are running within the target tolerance band. Under our central projection, year on year inflation will start rising in May. It will make its way back within the target tolerance band early next year and stabilize thereafter at slightly over 3%. Such inflation path will reflect the low base effect from prices of petroleum products and fruit and vegetables, the expected further recovery of international primary commodity prices, the strengthening of aggregate demand in Serbia, as well as a gradual rise in inflation abroad. The risks to the projected inflation path are symmetric, <coughs> and this is something you can see on the chart, are symmetric and associated primarily with future movements in global primary commodity prices and developments in the international financial market. To a certain de degree, the risks also relate to the outcome of this year's agricultural season and administered price growth at home. The projection assumes an active monetary policy which seeks to keep inflation within the target tolerance band in the medium run. After cutting the key policy rate to 4.25% in February, we have kept it on hold in the months that followed. The decision to keep the rate unchanged was mostly due to developments in the international environment and the expected effects of past monetary easing. Further monetary easing will depend on the assessment of the intensity of inflationary pressures, conditioned primarily by developments in the international financial and commodity markets. Monetary policy decisions will continue to be guided by efforts to keep inflation low and stable, while maintaining financial stability and supporting faster-paced economic activity. Thank you for your attention. We now open the floor for your questions. One question for the governor. 
relating to the strategic enterprises. Uh, so the government is about uh, to develop a plan until the end of May, and the deadline is about to expire. Uh, so what is the impact of the government or perhaps the bankruptcy of some enterprises, how this can impact uh, the economic situation in Serbia? First of all, uh, the question of uh, resolving uh, uh, the, the problems uh, uh, and uh, when it comes to structural reforms, these reforms are discussed in the entire world. What uh, makes me happy is the conclusion of G7, uh, uh, which was published uh, a few days ago, um, and which uh, says that uh, uh, each country that seeks to resolve its uh, structural problems, uh, which is the main precondition for a successful monetary policy, uh, is... Uh, uh, the, um, is uh, the moment when you uh, admit to your uh, specificities, meaning that each country, uh, no matter how integrated it is uh, into the EU or into another geopolitical uh, region, so each country has to take into account its own specificities, meaning that uh, uh, the resolving um, of the problems of these enterprises means that each of these uh, enterprises uh, poses a particular problem, and uh, I am happy about about the approach uh, uh, to uh, solving uh, the problems of uh, RTB Bor, uh, meaning that this is a single enterprise, it's a specific company uh, that uh, lies on uh, uh, gold uh, findings, and this is very important uh, for our central bank uh, because uh, we are uh, the only authorized entity uh, to buy uh, such gold uh, at prices allowed uh, also at in on international stock exchanges. Exchanges, uh, but uh, the whole region depends on this company, meaning that uh, when you make decisions, uh, um, either uh, whether you are uh, the central bank uh, or the local uh, self government and so on, you have to uh, bear in mind the social sustainability of economic solutions. Uh, so if uh, anyone showed courage uh, to uh, somehow um, stop the practice of uh, implementing uh, such senseless protection of enterprises that are not important for the region, uh, for uh, the country. Uh, so this is actually the, the, government, uh, the government of Serbia, meaning that the government of Serbia has uh, shown uh, caution and it has uh, shown uh, uh, it has exercised uh, a good approach to resolving uh, this uh, problem. Uh, so uh, fiscal consolidation is uh, also ongoing and uh, now we are able to value our monetary policy uh, as, as a policy that uh, yields results in terms of uh, stabilization and in terms of a decline in interest uh, uh, rates on uh, loans to all sectors, uh, in terms of restoring uh, trust in the domestic uh, currency. This also means uh, a more credible uh, monetary policy if its measures uh, relate to a higher percentage of all uh, transactions, uh, both of loans and deposits, and uh, they make efforts to increase the percentage of the dinar in these transactions. And now uh, the effects of fiscal consolidation uh, um, uh, yield uh, results in terms of a responsible and accountable uh, state, meaning that uh, fiscal and monetary policy have to uh, be coordinated. In 2012, uh, we uh, embarked on uh, reforms that is on stabilization and uh, now you can see the results of these reforms you may love us or not you may you may like us or not but there are uh, indicators um, uh, comparable indicators that are measured that have been measured for four years uh, relative to the earlier periods and you have to admit that the National Bank of Serbia has enabled that that it has created a favorable macroeconomic environment uh, for for uh, domestic, uh, foreign and other investors, for those who take loans and uh, for those who are uh, about to save, who wish to save. And uh, today I would like uh, to uh, somehow uh, convey to you uh, this message in terms of observing the situation in a different way. Uh, first of all, I, uh, at the very beginning of this presentation, I uh, highlighted uh, the GDP growth uh, uh, projection uh, revision. And and uh, 
we expect that uh, until uh, the end, namely GDP growth uh, was in line with our expectations um, uh, last year. And uh, this year we believe it will be 2.5%. Uh, if we have a higher uh, GDP, uh, uh, public debt is incorporated into it and so on. If our GDP is higher, uh, all difficulties uh, that we have inherited, all risks emanating uh, from the environment will be overcome in an easier way. What does it mean to have a higher GDP uh, rate? Uh, it means higher employment, higher aggregate demand, uh, more budgetary uh, revenues and so on. And how can we reach this? Not only uh, by talking about uh, bad um, um, investments and NPLs and so on, uh, so, uh, the practice uh, of um, criticizing those who are absent uh, during a lesson and to pay specific attention to those who are bad, uh, this practice should be uh, discontinued. As a central bank, uh, we wish to uh, have um, proper communication uh, uh, with all market participants, participants and the entire industry. We wish to have um, such an approach where uh, all enterprises should be uh, taken into account and all the whole system should directly contribute uh, to GDP growth. We shouldn't uh, base uh, all, all our expectations on a single project and if it fails, everything fails as well. And uh, that's why I'm emphasizing this kind of uh, diversification of FDIs and so on. And there are also branches, specific branches that contribute uh, to a higher quality of the growth growth that we're speaking about and uh, of the growth that we're projecting. Uh, when it comes to the period ahead, the central bank will encourage uh, credit growth. Uh, credit uh, growth means economic growth, that is GDP growth, because only if you increase um, the entire uh, cake, so to say, uh, the inherited uh, problems of financing uh, the deficits will be more bearable. And um, this, uh, 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 this is the very objective. We don't want only to survive, we want to live better. Uh, we have already initiated uh, um, uh, uh, such talks with bankers, with the banking industry in the best possible way. We also announce uh, competition through microfinancing organization. We have also announced that we will protect uh, not only those uh, who have savings, uh, um, um, and, for example, FX savings uh, will not uh, pay off because uh, um, uh, the banks are announcing uh, zero interest rates because of the situation in the international environment. And we already, we're already saying dinar savings uh, pay off uh, more. And uh, uh, we will uh, persevere in our efforts. Uh, and, of course, this is more lucrative. It is more lucrative uh, today to invest in government securities. It is more lucrative both for citizens and for the government in all terms. Uh, so uh, citizens who have uh, low interest uh, rates on FX savings in their banks, they could perhaps re-channel their uh, savings uh, to uh, purchasing um, securities and the government should uh, encourage this uh, as well and all of us uh, as well. So maturities are different, uh, of course, uh, both in uh, foreign currency and the dinar and the, in the interest uh, that will be earned and the government already pays this interest uh, uh, today mostly to uh, foreign portfolio investments uh, investors and this could actually prop up aggregate demand uh, because uh, if you have a zero percent in a bank and you may have three percent with the government uh, this uh, would be beneficial to everyone uh, so you can uh, already make a conclusion about why this is not happening and uh, the central bank is, um, uh, is encouraging uh, this uh, initiative. Of course, we welcome FDIs. We also need uh, portfolio investors, those who invest in securities. But everyone uh, could have a higher level of security if citizens uh, who trust the government uh, could also show this uh, by investing in securities. And the government uh, could, um, of course, and should um, 
uh, pay them uh, returns, uh, regular returns, just as it does to uh, foreign and uh, portfolio investors. And uh, one more thing, uh, I would like to highlight something very important, uh, which is the result of our uh, well uh, thought out and a serious approach uh, to uh, maintaining um, uh, price stability and relative stability of the exchange rate. Um, the, when it comes to our FX uh, um, reserves, uh, uh, they equal uh, right now 9.3 billion euros. Uh, we have uh, actually net FX uh, reserves. These are government uh, reserves and that, uh, and, uh, that the central bank disposes of. So these net uh, FX reserves equal 7.8 billion euros. And all those who are buried and uh, who say that FX reserves are uh, uh, at their all-time low, I have to explain actually the structure of FX reserves. FX reserves were the highest in 2011. They equaled 12.1%. The These were gross reserves, uh, whereas net reserves uh, were around uh, 6 billion uh, euros. Uh, but the obligation to banks was uh, 3.6 billion. And uh, the obligation to the IMF uh, equaled uh, 1.6 billion uh, euros under the uh, 2009 arrangement uh, uh, today. And I will give you also a breakdown by year. These liabilities uh, to banks uh, equal only 1.5 billion. And uh, uh, the total amount that is gross amount is 9.3 9 uh, billion, whereas net reserves uh, stand at 7.8 8 billion uh, euros. Should I say that 7.8% uh, uh, is higher than 6.7 uh, um, um, billion, which was the case in the past, in 2012? And uh, liabilities uh, to banks today are only 1.5 billion uh, euros, which is the result of changes in regulations, that is in terms of um, um, decreasing FX, FX uh, reserves, that is the FX portion of uh, required reserves of banks. Um, in 2012, uh, this uh, level equaled 6.6 uh, 6 6 6 billion. In 2013, 7.8 billion. And this was due uh, to uh, the uh, participation of the central bank in the um, interbank FX market. We ended uh, the year uh, in a plus. That is, we bought uh, more uh, foreign currency than we sold. Um, so this. Uh, 2014 uh, was ended ended at 7.7 uh, uh, billion, and uh, the gross reserves were 9.9 .9 billion. Uh, 2015 ended at uh, 8.4 uh, billion, and this was the year when we were in a plus uh, because uh, we were buying uh, FX in the interbank FX market, uh, meaning that we bought more than we sold. Uh, that is uh, this amount equaled uh, 520 million euros, uh, meaning that we intervened uh, in a consistent way uh, without allowing any excessive volatility of the dinar, whereas in 2015 we didn't um, uh, permit uh, some uh, strong appreciation of the dinar because this uh, would not have been healthy for the entire economy. Uh, the buffer of uh, 250 million uh, of FX uh, um, bought more than uh, sold, uh, which was the result of our participation in the um, interbank FX market. So um, the, the beginning of the year was very tur turbulent, uh, and uh, all um, stock exchanges witnessed uh, many negative uh, trends and so on. And the pressure was uh, the pressure of non-residents was very strong in terms of the positioning uh, for these uh, diverging uh, policies of the of the Fed and of the ECB meaning that uh, the pressures that emerged in December uh, were neutralized uh, um, against the backdrop, backdrop of uh, pre-election circumstances and uh, different interests uh, were involved and pressures and so on. Nevertheless, we managed to preserve uh, relative uh, stability and uh, uh, we didn't, uh, of course, define uh, any target in terms of the nominal value, but 
but uh, we are well aware of the fact that uh, Serbia has a bad memory of inflation and the uh, exchange rate actually um, fuels uh, um, inflationary movements uh, in uh, Serbia through the incorporation of the exchange rate into prices. That is, the exchange rate is factored into prices. And the Ministry of Trade uh, uh, launched uh, the initiative uh, uh, concerning uh, travel arrangements, meaning that these travel arrangements uh, should be priced in dinars. And uh, representatives of uh, travel uh, uh, agencies uh, said that if these uh, travel packages were expressed in dinars, they said that this should, this could actually uh, push up the prices by at least uh, one uh, percent. We will have a meeting uh, with them and uh, we will uh, talk about this, uh, of course, because in Serbia we earn in dinars and we spend in dinars. So services, these services uh, should also be expressed uh, in dinars, uh, uh, meaning that uh, this does not uh, hold water, actually. But uh, if you have, um, since 2010 uh, until 2012, uh, if we uh, spend 3.7 billion uh, for the sake of maintaining uh, a certain value of the exchange rate, and uh, when dinar actually depreciated by 19.7%, uh, whereas from 2012 until today, we spent 1.7 billion euros, and uh, we have uh, the depreciation of, of less than 4%. Uh, so now people are um, somehow bringing into the question uh, our own currency and the process of dinarization that we are promoting and so on. And we also uh, seek uh, to uh, enhance uh, the efficiency of our monetary policy by expressing everything in dinars. It's very hard to please everyone. We are focused on our own work. We wish to encourage credit activity. We wish to deal with uh, um, sound enterprises. Those who created uh, NPLs uh, should uh, resolve uh, this problem with market uh, participants and those who created such circumstances. And uh, on our part, uh, we will um, uh, support this process with our regulations. And there are already some results visible in this field. But of course, we will uh, continue dealing with our uh, activities. And uh, we will uh, tend to uh, enhance competition uh, in the uh, in our bank uh, centric uh, system in the financial system in general and we all expect that uh, this will result in economic growth which could be even perhaps higher than we currently uh, project <laughs> If you could go back to GDP growth rate of uh, measured in um, the first quarter, as estimated by the Serbian Statistical Office, um, since your data for uh, the first quarter show a decline in credit activity at end March and a mild decline in foreign direct investments, uh, at the same time there has been robust growth in exports, what was the driver of that uh, GDP growth? And if we take into account that oil prices could go up and that some circumstances in the international environment could change and um, structural reforms in our country uh, would, will continue, uh, tell me what will be the generator, the engine of growth in 2016. Milan Trajkovic will answer your question, but I have to say that claims regarding credit growth are only partly true, but not fully true. Uh, you will uh, get an explanation. Um, hello, everybody. As regards estimated uh, GDP of 3.5% in the first quarter, 3.6 percentage points of that growth came from net exports, so based on the National Bank of Serbia's estimate. Out of this 3.6 percentage points of net exports, uh, we have a real export growth of 13% and a real import growth of 4%. We also have 0.8 percentage points coming from government investment, 0.7 percentage points came from private consumption, 0.3 percentage points came from final consumption, 0.1 from private investment, while only the only negative contribution to GDP growth in Q1 came from change in inventories, and it equals minus 1.9 percentage points. As regards 
uh, growth at uh, yearly level and its sources, its drivers, relative to our previous projection, uh, which was 1.8% in February. Uh, our GDP growth projection has been revised upwards primarily because of net exports, because instead of neutral contribution, we expect it to provide a positive contribution of 0.7 percentage points. We also expect a somewhat faster growth in private consumption. Instead of 0.1 percentage points, we expect a contribution of 0.4 percentage points, and traditionally high contribution of um, uh, investment is also ex expected. When it comes to foreign, uh, your question regarding uh, foreign direct investment, in the first quarter, they amounted to 330 billion, and this is the same as uh, in the same quarter a year earlier. So it's only slightly lower. But what you have to take into account is the fact that foreign direct investments are um, hardly the only indicator of investment. We have the value of construction works performed, which increased by 20% in the first quarter. Imports of equipment also recorded an increase. And so did the production of construction materials, and many other um, indicators uh, have improved. In Q1, uh, we have seen a 39% increase in relative to Q1 2015. If we go back to foreign direct investment, this is the only uh, indicator of investment which is not showing um, an increase. But we have envisaged this from the very start. At yearly level, we expect somewhat lower foreign direct investment than in 2015 when we had uh, FDI inflow of 1.8 billion. So our projection for this year uh, for FDI is 1.6 billion euros. But of course, this is not the only indicator, and it is uh, uh, certainly not uh, an obstacle to higher growth. Uh, the government also increased its consolidated capital expenditure by 66% in the first quarter which is also a very good sign. You've mentioned uh, oil prices, and uh, what you said has been incorporated into our projection. We have to admit that uh, oil prices are rising somewhat faster than we anticipated in February, but all effects of uh, oil prices uh, on macroeconomic uh, aggregates are included in our projection. And maybe I could clarify a bit further uh, GDP growth projection. Um, for example, um, recently in the media, uh, there, were, there was rumor that the IMF conf allegedly confirmed uh, our GDP growth projection of 1.8 percent. This confirmation, alleged confirmation, was published in the, May, uh, in the IMF's May report. When you open that report, you can see that this report is based on the World uh, Economic Outlook, which was published uh, in, uh, on the 12th of April before the meeting of the uh, IMF. Uh, board of Directors. Uh, so when you uh, look into the figures for Serbia, you will see that uh, these data are based on the February projection of the IMF. At that time, the IMF did not have all the data for the first quarter, and this is uh, where the difference um, uh, originates from. Uh, it is similar with uh, the European Commission's projection, which revised its projection for Serbia from 1.6% to 2%. So, so, at the time of uh, producing that projection, the European Commission did not have March data and it could, did not have a uh, uh, flash estimate for the first quarter, which is 3.5%. So we have to be aware of the dynamics of uh, producing and of releasing the, the projections. So when the uh, projections are produced, when they're adopted and when they're published. We do not claim uh, we, we cannot claim uh, but we, uh, this, but we are almost confident that uh, international institutions will revise their GDP growth projections for Serbia, both for this year and for the next year. When it comes to credit activity, you have carefully read the report, and uh, in Q1 we have recorded 1% credit growth um, 
uh, in great activity. But we have a decline for a corpora corporates of 1.7%, uh, but there is a rise in great activity to households of 5.11%. Uh, instead of 0.7% uh, fall, we so we do have a credit growth. Another important thing is that uh, last year when we revised GDP growth projection, we also together with our colleagues from the IMF revised um, credit activity growth. So what you have to bear in mind is that the um, start of the year is always marked by lower credit activity, and this is one of the reasons why we have a, a lower credit uh, activity. On the other hand, we have um, uh, the maturing of subsidized loans, and practically this is uh, another factor that affected credit activity in uh, Q1. Uh, 136 billion um, of uh, subsidized loans, 80% uh, were matured in 2015 and 20% uh, in two th early 2016. The majority uh, of the effect uh, of subsidized loans has been exhausted in the first three months of the year and the rest will uh, fade out in the uh, coming period. So this is what led to a somewhat lower um, level of credit activity. Uh, Milan mentioned and uh, we are inviting you to look uh, at this in more detail on page 26 uh, of the inflation report that total uh, volume of corporate lending in Q1 was 176.1 billion um, dinners and this was by this was definitely an increase uh, year on year so we do have a credit activity growth and we expect it to step up um, in the remainder of the year these are not only our expectations this is our well uh, aligned and harmonized uh, projection harmonized with the IMF uh, during their visit in uh, February so what the governor and uh, myself said in our introductory uh, presentations was that we will continue to support Support, uh, through creative activity will continue to support economic uh, activity. When the effects of um, uh, the season and the effects of um, subsidized loans fade out, we will see a 3% credit growth in both corporate and household lending. You know that we also uh, implement the uh, bank lending survey, and based on the results of that survey, we expect uh, we will see a rise in credit demand, uh, especially demand for uh, loans for current assets than for uh, refinancing loans. So the factor of financing investment is getting increasingly more pronounced. Uh, overall, credit activity is recovering. Uh, you also mentioned foreign direct investment, and you said that they are lower uh, than in the same period a year earlier. Uh, that is true, but uh, and um, we have to admit that the difference is, is minimal. We even wrote here, uh, this level is uh, very close to the level recorded uh, in the same period last year. Last year was exceptionally strong. We received 1.8 billion euros in foreign direct investment and they were uh, widely diversified and accounted for 5.5% of GDP. There is a special separate text box in our inflation report on this. Uh, our uh, projection for this year is 1.6 billion, but we are already being refuted by uh, movements in the first quarter where FDI was close to the level recorded in the previous period. And the European Commission also commended Serbia for um, its FDI inflow and it commended uh, Serbia saying that there is a positive trend uh, in Serbia and that Serbia is becoming a, a good investment uh, destination acknowledged uh, worldwide. So FDI is indeed lower, but uh, it is only slightly lower than in the same quarter uh, of 2015. Uh, we were positively surprised by the new GDP growth projection, uh, which is fact-based, and uh, there is, of course, a possibility that credit growth will all projection will also be revised up. <laughs> 
FDI of 1.8 billion last year does not mean that uh, we are uh, perhaps optimistic or unrealistic uh, when it comes uh, to uh, projecting uh, FDIs. Uh, we project them at uh, 1.6 billion euros, uh, uh, not uh, because we fear that uh, the interest of foreign investors will abate, uh, but uh, because of the fact that the year, which was unprecedented in terms of remittances uh, 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 between uh, around uh, 8 to 10 percent, uh, that is, remittances exceeded uh, eight, uh, almost 8 uh, uh, billion, uh, which is not uh, usual at all. Uh, so uh, this was uh, uh, an unusual year in terms of remittances, and that's why we lowered uh, our FDI uh, projection uh, from 1.8 to 1.6 billion euros. And uh, I would like to add something as well. Uh, so uh, we uh, also have a text box uh, published uh, in the inflation uh, report over the last uh, three years. Uh, Serbia had the largest share of FDIs uh, in uh, GDP of around 5.5%. Uh, uh, and for this year, this will be around 4.7% uh, uh, of GDP, which is an excellent result. Mirina Brajkovic, RTS. Uh, I would like uh, to ask you the following. Uh, if we have such excellent uh, macroeconomic indicators, uh, expected uh, growth, that is economic growth, uh, whereas on the other hand, uh, we also have uh, data on adverse uh, developments in the labor market and increase in unemployment, um, a small uh, uh, increase in wages uh, compared uh, to last year and uh, decline in the first uh, uh, quarter compared uh, to the fourth uh, quarter last year, whereas as of uh, May, prices uh, will increase in order to reach uh, targeted inflation. Uh, so econo economy will grow, but when will uh, the, the citizens feel uh, this growth? First of all, uh, um, I would like uh, to tell you that we all live in the same uh, country and uh, the stability that we are talking about, uh, that is uh, price stability as measured, uh, uh, recorded, uh, announced, presented, uh, so this has not been made up by us. And uh, I could uh, also bring you our vice governor, Diana Dragutinovic, who could uh, tell you something about uh, the, uh, this dispersion of inflation in terms of low prices. So low, infla uh, low prices exist as a low inflation, and I believe that uh, many people do feel this and uh, see this. Uh, we also expect a price increase. Uh, of what, uh, namely we expect uh, somewhat higher inflation um, emanating uh, from uh, our main uh, foreign trade uh, partners and inflation uh, resulting uh, from an increase in energy prices, that is oil prices. Uh, and uh, what we also have as uh, something agreed with the IMF, uh, that is uh, we uh, of course uh, have the right uh, to build uh, our project on a partial increase in electricity prices and um, we also uh, do not uh, we also have projections of the European Commission the uh, the projection of uh, the Ministry of Finance uh, uh, we uh, do not uh, 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 take heed of these uh, projections of course but we take them into account and we also have our own independent uh, projections uh, we also have our own models, uh, but uh, we uh, do see the reality, all of us, uh, what uh, these uh, price increases uh, mean. Uh, for example, the U.S. Uh, faces the fact uh, that inflation uh, uh, growth is at its lowest uh, in America, and uh, one part of the population does not perceive uh, such inflation in real terms, uh, meaning that you have uh, food, uh, have um, different rental uh, prices in, in America, America and so on. Uh, so these uh, prices uh, went up by 13.2% uh, 13, 13 on the annual uh, on the annual basis, um, uh, health care, education, and so on. Uh, so uh, uh, for 80% of uh, middle class uh, population. Um, 
is affected uh, by inflation and uh, this part of the population uh, does feel inflation in a painful way as well uh, but uh, we can uh, talk uh, in a different place about uh, uh, the perception of inflation and about uh, the methodological coverage as well when it comes to myself i believe that uh, it is th that uh, the consumer price index is not sufficiently good in terms of the covering in terms of the coverage of uh, products and the, uh, in terms of the averaging of uh, prices included but uh, on two occasions uh, so far and uh, we have somehow checked, verified uh, the, the way of measuring inflation. We have also checked the products incorporated uh, into this uh, coverage, and uh, we have to, we aim to somehow uh, converge um, this perception to the methodological uh, way of expressing inflation. Uh, you say that uh, prices have uh, gone up, uh, but of course, uh, one part of inflation is desirable for economic growth, and that's why we are trying to enter our corridor, our targeted uh, corridor and uh, defined uh, by law, but not at all costs. And uh, we do not want to create uh, financial instability uh, by having this spillover of the exchange rate, by allowing excessive volatility of the exchange rate and uh, uh, to uh, somehow bring inflation back in, into the target tolerance band through such, uh, uh, through such channel. And, uh, of course, we have uh, prices of um, uh, oil that are uh, very low and so on, and uh, uh, inflation is low for uh, particular reasons, and uh, you cannot uh, somehow fuel inflation uh, through the exchange rate, uh, which is, uh, of course, one of very important um, uh, reasons uh, and uh, elements uh, uh, according to which you can say whether you live uh, good or bad. Uh, of course, we have uh, our statutory objective. We will not sacrifice uh, this objective, but we will also not aim to achieve it at uh, any cost. Uh, but of course, all this depends on imported inflation, on developments in the international market, and uh, on administered uh, prices as well, which uh, do affect uh, the whole situation. And for example, the difference when it comes to electricity prices, it, uh, uh, it equals around uh, 0 0.4 percent if we have the seven percent increase uh, the inflation our inflation will equal at uh, 2.2 percent and uh, uh, without uh, this uh, price increase inflation will be 1.8 percent and uh, uh, inflation today is uh, uh, below the lower bound of the target tolerance uh, band this is because uh, prices are not increasing uh, at the pace that we expect uh, on the contrary uh, we have a decline and and, um, and uh, Mirko Djokic perhaps uh, may explain uh, why inflation is not within uh, the target tolerance uh, band. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, uh, we are afraid that inflation is uh, below the target, whereas you are uh, worried about uh, possible price increases. When are we going to feel the effects of GDP growth? I claim that they already feel the benefits of uh, economic growth because the responsible measures enacted by the government um, in terms of economic, uh, in terms of fiscal policy, uh, fiscal consolidation, and structural reforms, this is something that the citizens can already see and feel for themselves. If you have savings in dinars and if you see an increase in household lending uh, uh, higher than in corporate lending, this means that uh, citizens can take loans uh, confident that they will repay those loans and they are taking these loans at uh, uh, interest rates that are several times uh, lower uh, than several years ago. So the interest rates used to be much higher before uh, for both uh, dinar and foreign currency denominated loans. So tell me, does, does this apply to our citizens or not? But based on the national employment agency data, 
employment has reduced. Can I tell you something? Uh, the Serbian Business Registers Agency is about to hold a conference, but it's not up to me to announce that. Uh, yesterday, we received a bulletin, um, annual bulletin of financial statements for 2015, uh, which uh, uh, tells us something different than, than you. Uh, the data for 2015, both uh, corporate legal entities and entrepreneurs operated more successfully, which uh, shows that employment uh, has risen. Uh, the bulletin also um, mentions explicit uh, uh, figures, but uh, I think it's not up to me to, to announce those figures and results. If we are referring to data of the National Employment uh, Agency, it is true there has been an increase in employment in March relative to end 2015, and this is a result of seasonal factors primarily. If we uh, look at employment relative to the same period last year, we have a decrease in employment in unemployment. You can see a decrease of 17,000. Uh, and what also uh, affects households purchasing power are the real wages. If you take a look at, um, at them, year in year we have a real wage growth. We all know what's happening in the labor market. It is true we're in the process of structural reforms and employment in the public sector is decreasing, but employment in the private sector is increasing. And what's also very important that it is evident that uh, wage growth in the private sector is compensating for uh, what was practically a result of fiscal consolidation in terms of uh, public sector wage cuts. Uh, we can also say that um, in the future, fiscal consolidation can be regarded uh, on, from, that, from the financial aspect only, but the uh, main idea of fiscal consolidation is the functioning of the state. And one of the important elements of the functioning of a state is is employment, and uh, it would be logical to expect to uh, ensure um, smooth functioning of the state and uh, smooth settlement of, its, uh, of all of its obligations. So one of the key objectives here is to uh, engage people here in terms of their uh, innovation and capabilities, and they have to be paid for that. Um, the main idea of fiscal consolidation is to uh, set these um, things on a sound footing, and one once uh, the room is created, we have to start with uh, uh, wage relaxation. But already in Q1, we can see that uh, wages increased. You can see that uh, also uh, in uh, retail turnover, uh, which also increased and uh, not due to the seasonally effects. Uh, it increased relative to uh, the last quarter of the previous year, but also relative to the first quarter of uh, 2015. And this uh, uh, justifies our uh, projections and the contribution of private consumption of 0.7 percentage points to GDP growth. We do not say that the situation has dramatically improved, but it does uh, give us uh, some confidence that the economic recovery led by uh, investment into tradable sectors will contribute to uh, um, higher growth rates of household consumption and to it will lead to an improvement in the standard of living. Uh, wages have also recorded a seasonally adjusted growth. Now we will go through exact data on wages and employment. If we compare wages uh, with the first quarter of 2015, so this is year-on-year -year comparison, uh, nominal wages in Serbia rose by 4.5%, uh, real wages by 3%. Uh, 
Uh, this was uh, led primarily by an increase in wages in the private sector. Private sector wages rose in nominal terms by 5.8% uh, in real terms by 4.2%. This is confirmed uh, by data on retail uh, trade. Uh, retail in uh, trade in real terms rose by 10.2% uh, year on year. Uh, and uh, compared to the fourth uh, quarter, excluding all seasonal factors, uh, it increased uh, by 4.8%. Uh, when it comes to uh, data on uh, employment, according to the Central Register of uh, Compulsory Social Insurance in March this year compared to March uh, last year, total employment increased uh, by uh, over 6,000 uh, persons. Of this, uh, private sector employment increased uh, by more than 15,000 uh, persons, whereas in the public sector this figure fell by uh, around 9,000 uh, persons. This is confirmed by fiscal data for the first uh, quarter. There is a strong growth uh, in all forms of uh, tax revenue, especially those uh, forms uh, that concern consumption, uh, these being uh, VAT and excises. We have double-digit uh, growth rates uh, for all these uh, revenue categories. Uh, this is when it comes to wages, employment, consumption. What is the page on the in the report? Uh, perhaps you, uh, you don't have these figures in the report, but on uh, page 40 of the report, uh, the second uh, paragraph, uh, we are comparing uh, wages in the first uh, quarter with wages uh, in the fourth uh, quarter, excluding all uh, seasonal factors, and wages are on an increase. So page 40, second paragraph. People are always saying they don't feel uh, any uh, progress, any betterment. Uh, could uh, perhaps the grey economy spill over to the white economy? So what are the developments in this field? And uh, we have seen uh, some statistical increase, actually. So perhaps uh, this is uh, the um, factor behind uh, these uh, um, improvements in uh, indicators. So perhaps only the, the gray economy spilled over to uh, the white economy. And uh, that's why we see these uh, statistical improvements, whereas people don't feel any improvement. Perhaps this is a hypothesis. Uh, could you expound on it? Uh, so this does not uh, increase uh, uh, um, uh, trade. Uh, so those who were receiving uh, wages, uh, illegal wages, these persons uh, lived in the same city, of course, and this cannot be explained only by the factor that you mentioned. We have an upward uh, trend in the collection of uh, tax revenues, uh, and uh, Milan will uh, explain this in more uh, detail. And this is an important uh, uh, also uh, reason uh, behind this, but this does not to explain uh, the prevalence um, of uh, this situation and uh, the improvement in general. And uh, I have to uh, emphasize the following. Um, uh, so people uh, say they don't live uh, better, and this is an impression. For example, uh, they uh, graduated from um, different faculties and so on, they're not able to find work. In the US, many, many people have the impression uh, that uh, they rose uh, uh, to a high level of um, um, social standing, uh, whereas because of the crisis, uh, they fell down on the social ladder and they're not able to find a proper job and they're not able to value their knowledge in the right way. So this is a fact. Whereas here we have data. And uh, you cannot uh, make present, you, you cannot make up uh, these data because you have these data in the statistical office as well, you have them in the central uh, register, you have them in the insurance fund, you have them in the central bank, the Ministry of Finance and so on. Uh, so Stan Stamenkovic, uh, Mr. Kovacevic, uh, uh, their magazine match, um, all of these entities, including the Fiscal Council, uh, do have uh, such data and I have to admit that uh, it is all 
all about a conclusion uh, drawn from exact facts. Given uh, overall movements, uh, loans, uh, fiscal consolidation, income, and so on, depending on uh, the conclusion that you want to reach, uh, you just uh, uh, use a part of the picture underlining uh, those uh, elements that uh, should uh, support your conclusion. Uh, so, for example, you want to conclude that somebody uh, does not live better, whereas somebody else, some other entities will say that we do live uh, better. Of course, we don't want to uh, paint a bright uh, pink picture of the reality on the contrary, we are highly cautious, but uh, we do have these uh, figures, uh, and these figures uh, uh, testify uh, to better uh, tax collection. Um, so uh, these figures have improved, uh, and uh, in the last period uh, we have reached the percentage of over 70%. It is very unusual that this trend is still an upward trend, uh, meaning that there are still some gray zones that have not been uh, covered. But this is just a part of the picture, a segment of the picture. And uh, for me, uh, uh, as uh, somebody who is leading uh, this uh, uh, serious institution, and uh, 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 what I don't like is the creation of uh, some kind of impatience, or what I don't like is the interpretation of uh, data, which are sometimes, sometimes such interpretation can be extreme even. Uh, for example, I'm not talking about uh, credit growth, but uh, what I want to say that uh, uh, a high percentage of NPLs uh, have been sold, that is 13.1 uh, uh, billion of NPLs uh, have been sold, uh, and you cannot conclude that credit activity has deteriorated. Uh, for example, uh, subsidized loans uh, fell uh, due and so on, these NPLs were sold, and all this means and implies uh, necessary reforms, the implementation of necessary reforms. But when you want to um, uh, take just one sentence uh, out of these processes, when you uh, uh, just ask when the situation will be better, it, it's not easy to answer such question. Uh, please don't take it amiss, but uh, uh, for example, uh, journalists uh, say that um, uh, the governor is paranoid uh, because uh, she is buying uh, metal detector doors. Uh, this equipment must be purchased uh, for the Institute for Manufacturing Banknotes and uh, coins for restrictive uh, premises uh, where payment systems are being operated and so on. This is not for the head office. This is actually the standard uh, for uh, accessing certain uh, premises, uh, of course. So th the entire climate is uh, created uh, and uh, a negative picture is uh, uh, painted about uh, the central bank. Uh, this is not something that can help us do our work in a proper way. But I wish to underscore that uh, such kind of uh, uh, atmosphere that is being created in the public, uh, this will not make me less focused uh, on the work that I'm doing uh, and uh, on the work that uh, uh, means uh, uh, price stability, financial stability, relative stability of the exchange rate. And right now, we have to focus on credit growth, economic growth, along with uh, um, um, attracting uh, the most uh, uh, capable people to uh, the leading uh, places. Uh, uh, in the central bank who could improve uh, this uh, um, this whole situation. I recently visited a friend. I recently visited a friend and she told me the elections are over now, can we now return our deposits to banks? So there was a kind of concern or uncertainty among the citizens. Uh, they all waited for the outcome of the elections and maybe this uh, applies also to foreign direct investments. Maybe the investors are now uh, waiting uh, for the government to be formed and then they will um, start investing. Another thing I wanted to say, there is a kind of apples 
in Mercator, in the uh, retail store, uh, I have been eyeing these apples and thinking whether to uh, buy them. And a man approached me, uh, telling me, I haven't seen you for quite a while. I miss your uh, critical approach. And uh, he asked me do, if I knew uh, where did those apples come from. Uh, I said I, I had no idea, and then he told me that he thinks they came from Poland and that we have an import lobby in, in Serbia at work. Then I took the apples and uh, saw what was written on, on the label, and it said it was a, it stated that the origin of those apples was Serbia and uh, the company was a kind of cooperative from Celarevo. And I ran after him, uh, after that man, to uh, tell him where the apples come from. And he was um, kind of embarrassed and uh, we separated uh, very soon. And the third thing I wanted to say Maybe uh, I should not even say anything. Uh, until you uh, remember what you wanted to say, I will uh, tell you that the persons who withdrew their deposits and then waited for the outcome of elections to return those deposits in banks, th those people are probably in the category of those people who contributed to uh, um, an increase in FX savings by 25.5 million euros. And this is a, a very uh, interesting piece of data, and it becomes even more interesting if I tell you that foreign exchange savings in the first four months of the year, irrespective of the elections, increased by 40.6 uh, million euros. So uh, in April, they increased by 25.5 million, but even during the elections, there has been an increase in savings, which uh, does not boil down only to interest accrual. We uh, are monitoring the uh, structure of these deposits, the number of um, uh, lots, uh, their, um, the type of depositors, and so on. And I'm particularly proud of the fact that confidence in the domestic currency has increased, and this is something, uh, and this is the best possible reward for us at the National Bank of Serbia, as well as a proof that we are uh, doing the right thing. Uh, these savings will serve as a solid basis for uh, investment later on. So in order to clarify any misunderstandings, understandings uh, whether um, deposits should be returned to banks and where the apples are produced. If you asked me, I would have known immediately that the apples were produced in Serbia. You have mentioned 13 billion uh, non-performing loans that were sold. Do you have any data about the discount at which they were sold and uh, uh, data about the buyers, were they related entities or third entities, some third parties? Since December 2013, the volume of uh, uh, bank trading, uh, ending with 30th of April 2016, is at the level of 115.7 billion dinars. Of this amount, 33.6 billion uh, relates to uh, trade between banks themselves, so there is a sale, there is trading in MPLs between banks. 52.3 billion relates to uh, sale to entities related to banks, you know, there are special vehicles and, and so on. And 29.8 billion relates to sale to other persons outside the banking sector. At the same time, it should be borne in mind that since the start of the implementation of the MPL resolution strategy, uh, outside to persons outside uh, the banking sector, to persons not related to banks, uh, MPLs in the amount of 19.5 billion were dinars were sold, that, and that is double the amount than uh, recorded in the previous two years. We have uh, data information that in these transactions there were 
There were 23 banks um, involved in, in this trade in NPLs. Since the start of the uh, implementation of the NPL resolution strategy, so outside the non-banking sector, without changing any regulations, uh, NPLs worth 19.5 billion were sold, and this is double, double the amount uh, sold in the previous two years. And what does this tell us? Until you have a, a kind of uh, incentive, and this time we had it from uh, the International Monetary Fund, where one of the uh, benchmarks, where one of our commitments were, was for all stakeholders, banks and uh, um, uh, enterprises to untie the Gordian knot, the Gordian knot in order to increase uh, credit activity. And we obtained much better results, and I can only say that uh, it is no shame to give Give a, uh, to offer a hand uh, to, to someone uh, if uh, you have to improve any uh, area of your life. Uh, the Germans have a saying, uh, we have to move faster, but not only when we decide to do so ourselves, but sometimes we also need to be a bit pushed. So we are thankful to those who uh, have set uh, deadlines to us. Because in Serbia we have this uh, w Turkish word yavashluk, uh, which uh, indicates chaos, chaos and a situation where anybody, where everybody is doing what they uh, like. Well, I think that yavashluk is a thing of the past, and. Um, these, MP, these loans, which do not uh, bring uh, high profit. Their reduction uh, will maybe reduce the bonuses of those who um, approve those loans. Uh, I think uh, this has been prevented by the special diagnostic studies that the National Bank of Serbia has successfully uh, implemented, and banks no longer have an, uh, a possibility to keep on, uh, on their portfolios non-performing loans. They had to make adequate provisioning for those MPLs, or they had to sell them. Uh, what was the uh, price? That that they sold them, I do not know that, uh, but um, as we say, a, a bad bank, a container bank, um, garbage disposal uh, bank was not an option at any point because we do not want um, the taxpayers to bear the costs either directly or indirectly the costs of um, uh, bad decision, wrong decisions of other people. So if anybody wants to set up a bad bank um, so that uh, the portfolio of non-performing loans could be transferred onto that bank, we do not have any problem with that, but then uh, this would have to be uh, uh, other uh, private investors and then the Ministry of Finance or, and the Tax Administration and we uh, as the National Bank of Serbia, if we have to change anything in our regulations, will be certainly willing to do that and to su support the process, but uh, we will definitely not do it uh, in a way um, as is uh, claimed uh, by some media. Uh, no, MPLs will not be sold to natural persons. They can uh, be sold only to uh, legal entities and so on and so forth. But I have to tell you that the interest in the uh, sale of um, non-performing loans of natural persons is not that high. Uh, the interest in restructuring is uh, much stronger. So the funds, uh, one of them being uh, KKR, uh, expressed a wish to invest in non-performing loans and to help uh, by bringing um, experts who um, are specialized in corporate governance and who could uh, manage those uh, problematic companies uh, in a much more uh, efficient way. So, of course, we are willing to, um, uh, we are open to new ideas. Uh, we do not have a problem with uh, people, uh, with entities making profit with uh, other, uh, counter with their counterparties. But 
I think that we will never um, we uh, are kept keeping close eye on all the risks that can arise from um, these transactions so profit can be made by anyone but uh, the risks must be shared so to be quite specific, we do not know what is the price at which MPLs are sold, but uh, the buyer and the seller uh, must agree on that. And of course, uh, none of them should be under pressure or should be uh, brought into a more favorable uh, position. We will not um, uh, support this pressure, but we will help everybody. Interest-bearing assets in banks has reached the level where we can no longer speak about the uh, status quo. We have to think about the fact that banks in their interest-bearing assets, uh, uh, they have to think uh, on a long-term basis and not uh, uh, using the excuse of NPLs and of uh, dealing with um, uh, investment banking only. Of course, investment banking should exist. It should thrive. The latest uh, products should also thrive. We are open to them. But we know what banks' um, main purpose is. Uh, they uh, have to make profit, but depositors also have to make uh, profits, and borrowers have to uh, get more favorable um, terms of borrowing that will enable them to repay their loans, to survive, and to uh, live prosperously. All the stakeholders need to do their part of the job. I remembered what I wanted to ask. Two weeks ago, we presented our MET uh, publication. Uh, my daughter gathered her friends, and they came at my place. Uh, they are around 50 or something, and one of them asked me the following. You were always highly critical of uh, all processes, and uh, last night uh, I saw you on television and you said that uh, production is rising, and uh, how much money did you, g did you get to say that? Uh, so I enjoyed uh, some kind of reputation with my daughter's friends and uh, when I said that something is uh, going uh, to a good direction, they believe that I'm being uh, paid uh, to, say sh to say such things. Uh, so uh, 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 changes uh, entail time uh, among people and this is what you also talked about. And uh, may I say who... Uh, uh, Mr. Stanislavinkovich uh, is uh, uh, so the first uh, uh, lady. Uh, uh, the first uh, lady was mentioned uh, several days ago in uh, newspapers, and uh, Mr. Stanislavinkovich was the advisor, was the advisor of the then uh, prime minister, and uh, actually you are saying the truth only, and of course you're not being uh, paid for that. Uh, when it comes to, to KKR that you mentioned, uh, uh, do they want to buy uh, loans of uh, public enterprises or uh, so on? Uh, so they are interested in participating in the process of resolving uh, the NPL issue. Uh, uh, so they want to invest uh, some fresh money. But first of all, uh, they want to implement restructuring. Uh, this is not about the purchase. This is about the restructuring of enterprises. Uh, or that uh, may be viable, so they want to uh, freshen them up uh, financially, but they also want to bring uh, new people uh, who could uh, uh, govern these uh, companies in a better way, who could manage them in a better way. I don't know why you single out uh, public enterprises here. Uh, of course, so we have banks, whether they have parent banks here or abroad, uh, these are banks of the domestic uh, banking sector, uh, so NPLs, uh, 
do not differentiate uh, uh, owners, uh, the structure of capital, and so on. And that's why I talked about uh, 11 enterprises, where we should uh, think seriously about each of these enterprises individually. We should think about the importance of these enterprises uh, for the government, uh, what should be the percentage of uh, government uh, participation of uh, stake, state uh, stake in these uh, enterprises. Uh, and of course, this, I believe, uh, will be discussed in future. But uh, for the time being, uh, uh, talks are not being uh, held in terms of uh, individual enterprises, individual owners, and so on. Um, this was an official meeting, a general meeting, and uh, interest uh, was shown uh, in this regard. So if you don't have any more questions, I would like uh, to thank you. So thank you. See you next time.